Ramadan, the month of fasting and the Quran begins this evening. Happy Ramadan lights at Piccadilly Circus in London for the first time. Indonesians welcome Ramadan with Kukurak Festival. U.S. Treasury head says banking crisis different from 2008. Knesset passes bill allowing Israelis to resettle illegally. 20 years on, media role in promoting Iraq war remains. Second elderly Muslim sat on fire, leaving mosque in the UK. From Washington, D.C., this is the Muslim News on Muslim Network TV. Assalamu alaikum, I'm Hannah Zuberi. Our top story tonight, Ramadan begins tonight. It's a holy month-long observance from Muslim communities. God has commanded Muslims to fast as people of other faiths do and have in the past. In the Quran, the Islamic holy book, God says that the purpose of fasting is to develop a character of piety and gratitude. Muslims around the world will observe Ramadan by fasting from dawn to sundown, offering extra nightly prayers together. London Mayor Sadiq Khan switched on the lights display in Piccadilly Circus to mark Ramadan as people gather to celebrate this historic moment on Tuesday. The concept has been curated by the Ramadan Lights UK, a not-for-profit organization which aims to spread awareness about the month of fasting. The display depicts the phases of the moon throughout the month, bringing the light of Ramadan to the streets of London, Ramadan Lights UK said in an Instagram post. The initiative led by founder Aisha Desai began three years ago and has since grown. In related news, ESPN reports that Premier League and English Football League officials have been asked to provide an opportunity for players to break their fast at evening games during Ramadan. Indonesian families gathered for the traditional Ramadan festival Kukuruk, held just before the start of the holy month of fasting in the world's largest Muslim country. The Muslim community welcomes the arrival of Ramadan with activities carried out together with relatives and colleagues. Footage from Siasin village in Bogor of West Java province shows people coming together around communal meals served on top of banana leaves. We bond with nature and plants that were created by the Almighty, says local resident Susi Lawati. She says community members also pray together and visit the graves of their relatives. Another local resident, Yuhri, said that the meals are collectively served by the community. The Kokorak tradition is an activity that has been carried out by the people of Bogor for generations. The first fast of Ramadan will begin Thursday. The month is expected to end on April 20th with Muslims worldwide gathering for the Eid al-Fitr Islamic holiday and its accompanying festivities. U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen said Tuesday the current banking crisis is different from the 2008 financial crisis. Yellen stressed the importance of stabilization and restoring confidence in an address to the American Bankers Association conference in Washington, D.C. She noted that the U.S. had post-crisis reforms after the 2008 financial crisis that improved capital standards and supervision. She added that there's time to reevaluate whether some adjustments are necessary in supervision and regulation to address the root causes of the current crisis. Yellen said that immediate focus should be on stabilizing the banking system and restoring depositors' confidence. Her comments come as four banks in the nation suddenly collapsed in recent weeks. Their demise has raised fears that their financial difficulties could cause a domino effect on the rest of the banking system. 
Yellen said community banks play a vital role in providing credit from financial services to small businesses and consumers. She emphasized banks need to reassure customers that they are strong and resilient, as does the government. Authorities have ramped up security around Trump Tower, the Manhattan Criminal Court, and Manhattan District Attorney's Office in New York City. Barricades and trucks are being used to boost security. This is ahead of a possible indictment of former President Donald Trump. Trump claimed he could be arrested Tuesday in a post on his social media platform, Truth Social. He said District Attorney Alvin Bragg is considering charges stemming from a $130,000 hush money payment to adult film star Stormy Daniels in 2016. The money was paid to Daniels, whose legal name is Stephanie Clifford, by then-Trump lawyer Michael Cohen in the weeks leading up to the 2016 presidential election. The payment was in exchange for her silence on an alleged sexual encounter between Trump and her in 2006. The ex-president told supporters to protest and take our nation back. British airstrikes targeting Daesh militants in Iraq and Syria likely killed dozens of non-combatants, according to a report. That's despite claims by UK military leaders that no civilians died during such bombings. An investigation by the monitor group Air Wars and The Guardian revealed Tuesday. Air Wars obtained via Freedom of Information Act requests previously classified documents. The group identified eight airstrikes they may have been carried out by the UK warplanes in which at least 32 civilians were killed. News regarding media's role in promoting the Iraq war. Details after the break. Stay tuned and we'll be right back after these messages. Welcome back. The world this week marked the 20th anniversary of the US-led invasion of Iraq. Journalism experts weighed in on the corporate media's complicity in amplifying the Bush administration's lies about Iraq's non-existent nuclear, chemical, and biological weapons. Los Angeles Times columnist Robin Apkarian wrote Sunday that American mainstream media bought into phony Bush administration claims about it. That led the nation into a conflict that claimed the lives of thousands of Americans and hundreds of thousands of Iraqis, Apkarian said. A notable exception was a group of journalists at the Washington DC Bureau of Night Rider. They published dozens of articles debunking and criticizing dubious claims about Iraq and its weapons of mass destruction. Washington, D.C.-based nonprofit Center of Public Integrity reports that former President George W. Bush and top administration officials made at least 935 false statements in the two years after September 11, 2001 about the national security threat posed by Iraq. Those lies were repeated by most U.S. corporate mainstream media. The center called it part of an orchestrated campaign that effectively galvanized public opinion and in the process led the nation to war under decidedly false pretenses. A Fox News producer has made bombshell allegations against the network. Abby Grossberg says that she was pushed by Fox News lawyers to give false testimony in the deposition of a $1.6 billion lawsuit against the network. She also says that she witnessed a parade of anti-Semitic and sexist behavior from network bigwigs. Grossberg did not mention any Islamophobic conversations at Fox News. Fox News is facing a lawsuit from Dominion Voting Systems for spreading election lies. 
Ethiopia pushed back on Tuesday against U.S. State Department's claims that certain grave crimes were committed during the conflict in the country's north. The State Department's statement does not contain any new findings and appropriates blame amongst different parties in the conflict, according to the Foreign Ministry. The statement comes as Ethiopia is implementing a peace agreement and engaging in consultations on transitional justice. It also comes days after a March 15th visit by U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken to Ethiopia, where he announced a $331 million in humanitarian aid. The Foreign Ministry said that the statement is inflammatory and divisive, as it will be used to advance highly polarized campaigns pitting one community against another. Ethiopia reiterated its commitment to implementing all measures of accountability, including finalizing the nationwide consultation on transitional justice. Ethiopian authorities said that they hope Blinken's visit will help restore strategic relationships between Ethiopia and the United States. Saudi Arabia has freed a dual U.S. and Saudi national imprisoned for his tweets critical of Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, his son confirmed Tuesday. The U.S. State Department said in October it raised concerns about 72-year-old Saad Ibrahim al-Mahdi with the kingdom. Al-Mahdi was taken into custody in November 2021 when he traveled to Saudi Arabia to visit family. He was sentenced in October to 16 years in prison. Ibrahim al-Mahdi, the senior al-Mahdi's son, said his father remained in Saudi Arabia after being kidnapped in the kingdom because he had peacefully expressed himself online while here in the United States. Al-Mahdi said for exercising his rights, his father spent more than a year and a half behind bars, enduring torture and neglect. Al-Mahdi has been released and cleared of all charges. Israel's parliament has passed the second and third readings of a bill to allow Israelis to resettle in four settlements in the occupied West Bank. The bill rolled back 2005 legislation ordering the evacuation of the illegal outposts of Hamesh, Ghanim, Kadim, and Sanur in the occupied territory. It was passed 31 to 18 votes in the 120-seat Knesset, the assembly said. The evacuation of the outpost was part of a disengagement plan implemented by then Prime Minister Ariel Sharon. At that time, Israel removed more than 9,000 settlers in 21 illegal settlements in the Gaza Strip and the Northern West Bank. The Knesset said that the goal of the disengagement plan was not accomplished. Estimates indicate about 650,000 settlers are living in 164 settlements and 116 outposts in the occupied West Bank. Under international law, all Jewish settlements in the occupied territories are considered illegal. The UK's counter-terrorism police are aiding the investigation into a second Muslim man within a month being set on fire after leaving a mosque. The worshipper was targeted as he walked home from the Dunley Road Mosque in Birmingham on Monday evening. A man was taken into custody on suspicion of attempted murder Tuesday. West Midlands police said the victim is in his 70s. He was approached by a man who spoke to him briefly before spraying an unknown substance on his jacket and igniting it. CCTV footage of the attack shows the elderly Muslim trying to fend off the assailant after being sprayed. The victim was consumed by an enormous ball of fire and suffered burns on his face. He was taken to a hospital with serious injuries and remains in critical condition. That's all from our Washington studios tonight. Thank you for tuning in. You can find previous episodes and more on our YouTube or Facebook. For more content, keep watching Muslim Network TV or visit muslimnetwork.tv. Assalamu alaikum and good night. And Ramadan Mubarak.